This video focuses on industrial type machines. I would not necessarily suggest that you purchase this type of machine as your first machine. They're a whole different breed. I've had many different sewing machines over the years, but never considered an industrial machine until three to four years ago. I stumbled upon the Sailrite website and started watching their huge collection of free videos. I wanted one of their UltraFeed machines as soon as I saw its tremendous capabilities. It wasn't until recently that I could justify yet another machine to add to my collection. After you have a chance to use your beginner's machine, you'll probably want to upgrade to something else. The natural path is into the electronic machines with more bells and whistles, like the FAF that I own. Some people will even take a larger step up to the embroidery machines. I know that some of you are not interested in fancy stitches. You want to step up so you can sew more home deck, do upholstery work, or make purses. What you really need is more muscle. An observation that I've made is that the more expensive machines are not more sturdy. It's a difficult concept to verbalize, but they just feel delicate. They are more focused on precise, detailed stitches than durability. You also have to cart them off to the dealer whenever something goes wrong. If the idea of oiling your own machine and fixing it if something goes wrong does not appeal to you, then stay clear of the mechanical machines. Personally, I like to understand how things work and I like to fix my own stuff. I want to take the covers off and see what's going on in there. This is a big no-no with the electronic machines. Here are some considerations if you want to go the industrial route. The needles on an industrial machine are not always readily available in the fabric stores or at dealers. They're a completely different type of needle and they're a lot more sturdy. The thread is another consideration. The thread for upholstery work is much larger, so you may not be able to pick that up locally as well. There aren't any push buttons to make things go and digital readouts. You're going to have dials that you need to work with on a mechanical machine. Stitches are typically straight or straight and zigzag. You're not going to get any decorative stitches at all. You'll need to do the oiling and maintenance yourself. These machines are quite heavy, so even though some of them are portable, they're meant to be carried around, just remember that they are pretty substantial. When shopping for an industrial machine, you need to be careful. Many of them are specialty machines that are used in production. These are very expensive and very specialized. Many of them do one type of specialty stitch, such as a chain stitch. This is not what you're looking for. I recommend the UltraFeed machine from Sailrite. These machines cost less than my FAF machine and most of the other higher-end electronic machines in the market. As of 2013, they're about $900. When you make any sizable purchase, the company behind it has to be considered. Just watch a few of the Sailrite videos and you'll see these are real people. They care about what they do and the quality of their merchandise matters to them. Even if you don't need an industrial machine, they sell lots of fabric and notions for outdoor and home deck projects. Typically, I'm cautious about making recommendations but I recommend this company without reservations. The other great thing about industrial machines is their availability. You can typically purchase one online and you can get all the accessories that you need online as well. Some of them may be available at a sewing dealer or at a show if you want to get your hands on them for a demonstration before purchasing. Let's take a quick look at my machine so you get a better idea of what you'll be looking for and what I've been talking about. So I'll give you an example of why you might want to consider this type of machine when you're making your purchase decision. Several years ago I recovered my couch and this is the fabric that I used. And you can see that it is relatively thin. It is considered a home deck fabric, but it really isn't any thicker than maybe a denim from a pair of jeans. And that was even pushing it for my machine where the layers were going to be three or four thick. So I didn't have a choice. This is what I had to buy. The couch has not worn well and it already needs to be recovered because this simply just was not uh, a sturdy enough material for that application. But again, I didn't have much of a choice. That's all I had. Now if you get a 
more industrial machine, you can use fabric like this. And this is real upholstery grade fabric. This is tough stuff. It's got the backing on it. And you can see here what kind of depth we're talking about. And if you look in comparison with these two, I mean, it's, it's not even in the same ballpark. So this is going to wear for a very long time. So what I'd like to show you is putting this together, how easy it is on the UltraFeed machine. And just to make it interesting, I'm going to go ahead and take a piece and fold it in half as if I was doing some type of a piped seam. And I'll put this between two pieces of material. And so this is what I'm going to be sewing. So let's take a look at how that works. So here we are over at the machine, and you can see that what I've done is clipped this because I don't even have pins that are <laughs> substantial enough to hold these layers of fabric together, but you can see this is pretty substantial. So let's get that under here. And basically, what they say is if you can get it under the presser foot, you can probably sew it. So I'm going to have to agree with that. So now you can see that uh, the machine had absolutely no problem with this. When you're doing this type of work, you'll use a longer stitch than you would if you were sewing a garment. But this machine just ate right through it, no problems. <coughs> Here's the back. Again, it's perfectly even. And if we open this up, now I have a nice piped seam here. And you can see what the advantage to this is. If this is the kind of work that you're going to be doing, maybe you make a lot of purses or jackets or coats of heavy material or home deck work, uh, this machine would quickly pay for itself. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time going over this machine because Sailrite has more videos than you can possibly <laughs> imagine on their website. So if you're interested in one of their machines, you can go over there and see the machines in action and all the different features that they have. But I'll just kind of go over some of the things that you might want to look for on an industrial machine. First of all, these are not electronic machines, as I mentioned previously. Everything is mechanical. And this particular machine here is where you would set your needle tension and here you have the option of setting the needle position to the left, the center, and the right and this is the stitch width. This particular model does do zigzag and then here is the stitch length and over here is the flywheel. Now they offer a different flywheel that um, makes hand cranking very easy and if you're working with that electricity you'll definitely want to get one of those and also you can just hand crank with when you have electricity if you want to to just slow the machine down and so you have more control and then back here is the lift for the foot and you can see that the feet are very aggressive and uh, the feed dog is as well and that's so that it can take that big hunk of material and move it. But surprisingly, it doesn't damage the material at all. They do have a little bit less aggressive foot available s if you're worried about damaging fabric. One of the drawbacks to an industrial machine is its weight. This thing weighs a ton. And that's actually a good thing because when you're moving large pieces of material, you don't want your machine shifting as you're uh, putting the material under the foot. So be prepared for more weight than you're accustomed to when you go to purchase a machine like this. 
Here's one of the samples that they provided with the machine. I think they run them all through their paces before they send them out. This is a Naga hide material, and I think there's eight layers in here, um, six layers. But that's the kind of testing that they put these machines through. Now, if you took that in to your regular sewing machine dealer and said, I want a machine that does this, uh, they may be hard pressed to find you something capable. So it's a whole different ball game. Now, one of the things that they do say is that you can use this for home sewing as well. Right now, I've got it set up with a very sturdy, large needle and really big thread. So I'm going to switch this over and I'm going to set it up with standard thread like I would on my just regular home sewing machine. And we'll take a look at what that does. Now I have changed out the Ultra Feed to give it a shot with some regular home material. This is muslin and it is very, very thin. You can see through it. Um, you don't get much thinner than this. So I've got two layers here. And what I did to change the machine, I went ahead and put a less aggressive foot on it. And I switched over to home sewing thread and also switched out the needle. This is a size 12, which is uh, basically what you would use in your standard sewing machine. So let's give that a go. I also uh, changed the tension, obviously, because the thread is so much thinner. So there you go. Um, you can see it did a perfectly good job here. And you would need to mess with the tension a little bit to get the stitch set how you would want it. But it is perfectly capable of sewing the thin stuff. And most of what you sew isn't made out of muslin anyway. So um, like a twill or denim, obviously denim, but anything of any weight isn't going to be any problem at all. So what they say on the site is definitely true. This machine can be switched over to just so regularly. I don't know that I would suggest purchasing this machine and this machine only, unless of course you do very little work like this, then I would say go for it. Um, I know I kind of sound like a sale right salesperson, but um, I'm blown away by the capabilities of this particular machine and the fact that it is affordable for the home sewer. So if you do any kind of heavier duty work, and that can even include things like fur, you know, it's not easy to sew this type of stuff with a standard sewing machine, and this machine would just eat it up. So um, you might consider getting something like this for your second machine. Thank you.